Welcome back. This is Jennifer, and I'm glad you're here. Today, I am creating some fun, shimmery, bright, colorful backgrounds, and then turning them into cards with lots of die cutting and foiling. I will be using a new to me product today that is both fast and fascinating to use. They're called Lindy's Magical Powders. Now there are other powders on the market. You could definitely use whatever you may have on hand, or you could do sprays and other techniques to get similar inky backgrounds. But I had so much fun with these products that I wanted to share this in a video and then show you how I turned all of the backgrounds into cards. So Lindy's Magical Powders are dye-based pigments, and they're a little bit different than like a pigment powder that I've used in videos before, because these are ink powders that are dye-based and they will stain rather than kind of float within the mediums. These powders are very strong, so a little goes a long way. You don't need much. There are many different things you can do with them. I will show you a couple in today's video and more in the future. Now, when I went to purchase these, I was inspired by my friend Claire. I saw her do some fun things with them, so I went and I bought a bunch of sets. And I'm showing you the different sets that I have and what I'll be using today. When I got these sets, I decided to create little swatches of them, and then I die cut swatches with a circle die and glued them right into the bottom of the container. So I can easily see which is by flipping it over, and you can see what the final result will be. But keep in mind that the samples on the packaging are really close to what you get. That's not always the case, but in this you can see they're a pretty good match to what you have on that little tube that holds the little jars. Now, as I mentioned, these are very potent. A little goes a long way, and they are super shimmery. Some have like an iridescent look, some have like a silvery shimmer. All are a little bit different, which makes it really fun. I know there are other powders on the market that do similar effects, but I was drawn to these because of the amount of shine in them and the number of colors available. But if you have others on hand, try using those. Now this set is a little bit different. This is the Glitzy Shimmer set. Now this I feel like is clear with a floating metallic look. So you can see how I did on white cardstock. So you can see a gold, silver, copper kind of floating look. I use these as add-ons over the others if I want some more sparkle, and you'll see that today also. So I have a bunch here, but keep in mind, you can mix different colors to create new ones. You don't need a lot of them. Really, one set will do a lot for you. In today's video, I'm focusing on using these powders to create fun effects on backgrounds. But keep in mind, there are many things you can do with these, including watercolor and much more, which I'll talk about in a future video. Now I'm gonna be using a lot of water for these backgrounds. So I'm using Tim Holtz watercolor paper, which is my favorite because it's bright white. And I like to put a sticky mat on the back of that watercolor paper just to keep it flat. So this will keep it from warping when it gets wet. And then I have a Tim Holtz media grip piece that I cut down. This will just hold it in place so that I don't have to worry about it moving or warping or anything. If you want to learn more about the system I'm doing here, I'll link to a video that shows it, but by all means, you could tape it down or whatever is easiest for you. I like to use a fan brush to add the powder to my backgrounds. That way I can lightly tap it on. A little goes a long way, I can't say that enough. I will put the colors that I'm using up at the top of the screen, hoping that is helpful to you so you can see how they all work. You can see I'm putting very little bit of powder on the background. I did some orange towards the top, purple towards the bottom. Notice in the jar, it just like looks like a soft metallic one color, but when you spray it with the water, watch how the color reacts. It li it's like it turns on and comes to life. Now you could stop here and have this kind of uh, splotchy fun look, or you can add more water for blending, or you can add more powder for more intense color. I wanna go intense today and have a bit more blended look to it. So you'll notice I'll keep adding water, but note you could stop anywhere along the way here. You could like hit pause and stop there and not spray anymore and have that beautiful result. So the fun of this is you can do something kind of like fireworks and bold colors, or you can add more water and get like a watercolor background. 
Now I normally put down a little more powder at first and then spray water, but I wanted to kind of show you an experiment here, showing how you can do a little bit of powder to let a lot of the white background show or add more as you go. Really it's up to you how you create with these powders. And what you can't really see in the camera yet is there is a lot of shine to this. This particular background ends up having like an iridescent shine to it that is beautiful. Now I do recommend spraying with water and adding the powders and then walking away. You'll see I mess with it with a brush. I overthink things and that's not always good when it comes to crafting. So I encourage you to just let the water and the powders do their thing, walk away and let it dry. And I'll show you what these backgrounds look like dry in a moment. I'm using the same colors this time, but this time I'm starting by making my paper very wet with my spray bottle. I love the Tim Holtz spray bottle. It's a great tool and it does a nice even spray. And I put a lot of water on this background and now I am adding in the powders. Again, very little and watch how you get these effects right away. So you can either put the powder down first, then spray with water or put the water down first, then add the powders, totally up to you. And it may look like I'm putting a lot of powder on there, but I only pick up a tiny bit with my brush each time. All right, now another thing that you can do is use your leftover powders onto another piece of cardstock. So this is another piece of watercolor cardstock, and I am picking up some of the powders and the water that is extra on my glass work surface or in some of the areas that are a little bit dark. And I'm just brushing them onto that extra piece, and I will use that background on a card too. So you can use these to create all kinds of watercolor backgrounds with a brush too if you prefer. Now me, I'm not great with a brush. This is about as fancy as I get, but it gives a beautiful result when it dries. Now this time I want to get more of a solid colored background, not let any white show. So I put down water and I'm adding the magical powders and look at the effects. Look at that bright blue coming out. You get some dark brown in there. It's just beautiful how different colors come out of one jar. This is just the same two jars I'm using over and over again. You'll see other colors pop up in the jars when they hit the water. And I think that is part of the fun or the magical effect of these. So here I put down a lot of water. I got a lot of color there in the middle, so I kind of move some of it around and I'll brush some of that extra onto that other piece of cardstock, which will turn into a card also. So this shows that you can add more water and get more of a blended look. Keep in mind, I'm using two very bold colors here to start out with, like an orange color and a purple. You could definitely go less bold by just using one color or one of the softer colors. And you'll see some of those options later on here. Okay, so I set those aside to dry and look at these fun results. If you uh, put the powders down in the water and you don't like the results, set it aside to dry. Chances are you will like it. And if you don't, you could always add more on top to change up the look. There's where I used my extra powders with a brush. This one is where I used a lot of water on it. It's the last one that I did there. And look how it blends on its own, but you see those little pops of colors here and there. And then this is one where I let some of the white showing through, so I didn't use as much water. And you can also see where there's like puddles or little clusters of the darker colors. But then also you see some yellows and some blues popping out here and there. And then here is another. This is the first one we did. I left a little bit of the white showing from the background and look at that iridescent glow. That shine has like a, a iridescent look to it, but then there's also some gold shine too. Okay, let's do a background using one color only to show you how lots of different colors pop up from one jar. So notice that it looks kind of gray and boring in the jar, but I've already sprayed water on my watercolor paper and I'm putting it in and you can see the blues popping out and there's like a gold and a little bit of green popping out from it too. So you can stop anywhere along this process, stop spraying it and get a completely different look. But here, look at the gold and the green. When this dries, it's absolutely beautiful. This Time Traveler teal one is one of my favorites. This time I'm using the same color, but I am putting the powder down first and then spraying the water on top. You can experiment with it and see what you prefer to do because again, a little goes a long way with these jars. So you have plenty to play with. So after giving those some time to dry and making quite a few more, here are some of the results. And I have even more, which I'll show you in a moment. But you can see how some green, some gold, some copper, all comes out of that one jar.
Now I did have the leftover powder and water on my work surface. I don't want that to go to waste. So I'm just gonna use that brush and pick that up and just brush it right across. You can also dip your wet brush into the jar to pick up more color. And when this dries, you get a lot of that fun shimmer. Again, that's just one jar. I'm really drawn to the bold colors, but keep in mind there are softer colors available. This one is a Cape Cod Coral. I put down water first, and then I'm sprinkling on some of the powder, and this will give you a soft coral color look, but you can see pops of yellow and pink and magenta coming through too. That's what's fun about this. In the jar, it just looks like a light pink powder, but when you add the water to it, it activates it, and you get lots of colors showing up. This time it looks like a yellow powder up there, but you can see it is a great lime green. I used a lot of water and a lot of powder this time. I really wanted this to be intense to show you the different things that you can get. If you find you get too much powder in area, you could always pick it up with a brush and use it on another project. Here I just sprayed it generously with water, set it aside and look at how beautiful this is. Because I use so much water, you have more blending, but you can see the oranges and golds and other colors that pop through. All of these powders have shimmer in them, built into them, so you get beautiful shimmer in the end. But here I wanted these to have a little bit extra. So I'm using those glitzy powders, the one that I showed you like is a great add-on, and I'm just sprinkling some of the gold over these backgrounds. And that will add little splotches of gold onto the wet backgrounds, and when they dry, you'll have even more shine. You can leave it kind of um, sprinkled on and you'll have little droplets of gold or you can spray more water on it again and that will cause more of a blend. I love how these backgrounds can be a little unpredictable. You're not really sure how the color will move, but it always ends up really fun and interesting. But if you want more control, remember you can use a brush to apply these. These are leftover powders from one jar and look at all the color that comes out. So I spent some time making a bunch of backgrounds from some of these different powders, and I just thought I'd show you the end result. In every case, it's one color, unless I mention otherwise. Here you can see like the blue and purple iridescent shine to it. Some of them have that. You can also see some gold. This one has a gold shine to it, and you can see the little pops of green, pink, and blue all rising up too. And I think that's what makes this really fun is because it has that magical effect of the other colors popping up and a ton of shimmer. Now, if you want these backgrounds to be softer, like this one, you could use the softer magical powders or you could just use more water and less powder. Now on this next one, the blue background, I did use two different powders on this one together. They're both up at the top of the screen here. And look at, there's like a silvery shimmer in one corner. Then there's like a gold shimmer in another. And you got a little iridescent feel too. It's really fun how these look in person. If you want to, you could spray these with a fixative, but I'm not worrying about it. Look at that little, those little gold flecks. That was that glitzy gold on top. Now this one is bold. Keep in mind, if you feel your background is too bold or a little too wild for you, when you trim it down to put on a card, it gets a completely different look, or you can die cut from it, which I'll show you today. This one right here happens to be my favorite. I love that particular color and the silver shimmer it has. Now I end up with way more backgrounds than I need for today's video, but I'm going to save some of these for my next video where I show you a fun sentiment technique but most of these we'll use today. I really wish you could see the shimmer of these in the camera. I hope it catches it some, like this one has like an opaly shimmer and some gold to it also. And then just to show you, you can create softer backgrounds by using less powder and more water. Now my next backgrounds are my favorite because it's my favorite way to use these magical powders and that is with heat embossing for resist and I'll explain it as we go. I have four different Simon Says Stamp background stamps here. Any kind of background stamp would work but I do recommend outline images because the outline will create little walls which allow the colors to puddle up which gives a really cool result. So any outline images would be great. Off screen, I have white heat embossed those backgrounds onto watercolor paper. It's hard to see the images there, but you'll see them as soon as we add our powders and spray it with water. 
See how the white embossed image resists the color? And as it dries, the color will pool up between those white embossed raised areas, creating little pockets of color, kind of like a stained glass look. This top right one is definitely my favorite. That background stamp is perfect for this technique. And here I'm just using some green and blue powders, spraying it generously with water and then leaving it. This will look like a hot mess at first, but I promise if you set it aside and let it dry and do its thing, it will look beautiful. It's hard for me because I like to kind of mess around with it and try to control the look. But if you let it do its thing, the results will be beautiful. So I set those aside, let them dry, and here's what we end up with. If you find any of the color is sitting on top of the white embossing, you can use a baby wipe to wipe it away. But in most cases, the white embossing resists the color and the color kind of pools in the open areas especially in this one. See how there are like some little areas that are darker or different colors than others? That's why an outline stamp works best for this. So white heat embossing is great for this. You could use clear embossing powder on a white background, doesn't really matter. But this is a really fun way to use these magical powders or really any kind of sprays or other powders too. Now on this one, I used a more solid background stamp. I just love the background stamp. I did the powders over it with water. Once it was dry, I wiped the excess color away from the white embossing. So it does work with more solid background stamps if you want to. I'd really just think it's a fun way to use the powders in your background stamps for new looks. Now I have a boatload of backgrounds ready to turn into cards. Now some of these I will step up by adding some foil and so on. Others I will just turn into cards by adding some die cuts. And then others I will save for my next video. Let's start by stepping up some of the backgrounds, adding a touch of foiling. Now this is the new Simon Says Stamp Intricate Floral Background Hot Foil Plate. I love this. This is my new favorite background hot foil plate. It will definitely get used a lot. I have my Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil Machine. It is turned on, warmed up, and ready to go. You could use whatever foil machine works with whatever die cut machine you have. You just need to check with the manufacturer. I'm cutting a piece of Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil and putting it face down onto the hot foil plate. I will then put one of my magical powder backgrounds onto it. Notice the butterflies die cut from the top that I used in my last video. So you might have seen some of those butterflies in my last video. Now I'm putting tape on that so it doesn't shift. And then I'll put my two glimmer plates that come with the machine on top and press the timer button. When the timer button stops flashing, which is about a minute, I'll take all of those platform and plates out and run it through my die cut machine. So the glimmer machine provides the heat, the die cut machine applies the pressure, and this will give a beautiful foil image. Now here we'll peel off that foil and look at that beautiful gold detail foil against that bright, colorful background. I can't get enough of it. Now, if you're new to foiling, I will link to a video up here on the top right with much more. And it also shows how to use foil plates without a foil machine. So that was actually just a test run. I liked it, so I did an entire background in the same way. Now it's time to add some die cuts to it. I didn't want to use plain white this time, but I didn't want anything too shiny. So I chose the Memory Box Vintage Pastel Paper Pad. This has some traditional kind of mirror cardstocks in it, but it also has some muted shiny cardstocks, almost like a pearl effect. Now look at the pastel colors. You've got like this blue, it looks like a pearly blue and some purples and pinks and such. I thought these would be fun to use on these magical powder backgrounds because it has a little bit of shine, but not too much. Then there is this more bold pack that also has some mirror cardstocks in it and that kind of muted pearl look too. These are really fun for kind of stepping up your die cutting. It looks fancy, but really it isn't. It's just die cut paper. Throughout this video, I'll be using the Simon Says Stamped Etched Leaf Laurel Leaves and the Olive Leaves. These are older die sets that I've used a lot in videos and they're great basics that can be used for a lot of things. I'll also be using this older Memory Box Thanks die set. I just like the look of it and that it's thin so it doesn't cover up much behind it. And then a lot in this video, I'll be using this butterfly die. It creates a bunch of tiny detailed butterflies that are great to add as accents. 
All right, so I have my foiled magical powder background that I've cut down and put onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I used some of the champagne cardstock from that vintage pastel paper pad and cut the laurel leaves dies. And I cut two more from white cardstock to glue behind them for stack dimension. The thanks I cut from white cardstock for the shadow and then the peach uh, pastel cardstock for the thanks. I added little butterflies that are cut from vellum and then a little pearl to the center. I really love the background, all those different colors that pop through and the bit of shine added on top. Since I like the foiling over the magical powder background so much, I decided to do another. This one's a little bit darker, but again, I did the foiling on top and you can see some of the gold shimmer in the background too. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp You Mean the World to Me die and I'm cutting the words right from the center of the background. Then I will glue the negative space of the background onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. I have already glued together two white die cuts that say you mean the world to me. And then I'm putting the colorful one on top. By putting those two additional die cuts behind it, it'll have stacked dimension. I have the shadow that I cut from white cardstock and I'm gluing that right over the opening on my card. And then we'll glue the stacked letters on top of that. So the fun thing about this is I have that beautiful pattern on the background and on the letters because I cut right from the center. I added a few of those little butterflies as accents. Those are cut from vellum and then I put a white pearl in the center. So you have all the bold color in the background, the bit of shine, and then the simple vellum accents. This is a pretty quick card to pull together but it has a lot of detail thanks to those magical powders and the foiling. Now remember, you don't have to keep these backgrounds as backgrounds. You can die cut from them. In this case, I foiled butterflies and then die cut them to create a fun background. This is the Simon Says Stamp Dancing Butterflies Hot Foil Plate and Die Set. Off screen, I hot foiled with gold foil the butterflies onto one of my magical powder backgrounds. Same process that I did before. Then I use the coordinating die to cut them all out and look at that fun color with the gold shine on top. I repeated this process with a couple other colors of magical powder backgrounds. Did the foil butterflies and cut them out. And then we'll add all of these to the background of a card. For sentiment, I decided to use the big hugs. I really like the style of this set. And these are hot foil plates and coordinating dies. And I believe they have a coordinating stamp set too, if you don't like to use the hot foil plates. So I used big hugs and hot foiled it on white cardstock with a champagne color foil and added that to the top center of our note card. Around that, I'm gluing a bunch of our colorful foiled butterflies. Now behind each of these butterflies, I did glue two additional white die cuts just so it has dimension. Once I filled the front of the card, I'm cutting off any of the excess and then filling in any of the open edges with parts of those die cuts so the whole thing is filled. I also added some Lucy's Things dots. These are flat sequins that really pick up the light and whatever colors around it. So they're clear but iridescent. -y. And I glued some of those into the openings on the background, which really adds to the shine. So if you look at the butterflies closely, you can see the other colors showing through. Like on the blue butterfly, you have the green and gold showing through. On the peach, you have some pink and yellow. It really makes for a fun, colorful background and the foil makes it even better. For my next example, I again foiled and die cut, but this time I'm gonna step it up a bit by using some of the powders as a watercolor to add more color. So this is the new Simon Says Stamp Sketched Leafy Wreath Hot Foil Plate, and it comes with a coordinating die too. Now remember, you don't need a foil machine to use foil plates. You can use them to make an impression, and I'll link to that video up on the top right. I foiled the background with gold foil onto one of my green magical powder backgrounds. Be sure that your backgrounds are completely dry, bone dry, before doing the foiling. Then I will use the coordinating die to cut it out. Notice I have lots of that background left over that I can use for other projects. You'll see it in the next video. Now here I wanted to make the leaves a bit darker. So I'm taking a shamrock green powder and I put a little bit of water on the piece of plastic over there. And then I picked up a bit of the powder and look how instantly that water becomes a dark green. A little goes a long way with watercolor. So I'm just painting in the leaves with this darker green just to make the leaf pattern stand out even more. 
So the foil almost resists that watercolor that we added on top, so you don't even really have to stay in the lines. All right, so on my note card itself, I used that same intricate flower hot foil plate that I showed you earlier, and I foiled that with gold onto the white note card. We added our wreath on top along with some little peach pearls. Notice how you have lots of shine to that wreath. Lots of shimmer and then the foil. And then the leaves are a little bit darker because we added the darker powder and water on top. This shows you that you can do more powder on top of a background. So if you're not happy with the result, add some more. Or if you want some areas darker, add some more. Now the sentiment that says just a note is from the Simon Says Stamp Just a Note stamp set that comes with the coordinating die for that sentiment. So the rest of my cards today don't have any foiling, but they have die cutting. And these are card designs that you could use with a variety of background techniques that you may make using inks, paints, gel press, whatever. Now on this first card, I use leaves from this memory box set on the left, and then I use flowers from the set on the right. Really like the style of these. The size is also great because they make fun accents on your cards. Okay, for this card, I used the Pink and Main Stitched Banner Die Set to cut our background down and add to the center of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I thought it was fun to use that shape die instead of a rectangle. Now I used those flower and leaf dies to cut from a piece of mint uh, shiny cardstock from that vintage pastel paper pad I showed you earlier. And I glued those onto our background. On top of that, I added the thanks sentiment, which is a Simon Says Stamp Big Thanks die set. I use it a lot in videos. I cut the shadow from white and the word thanks itself from black. I also added the Lucy's Cards big dots to the center of the flowers. Notice all the different colors that show through on that background and the shimmer that it has to offer. And remember, I only used one color on this background. It has all this to offer. So one of the best things about creating backgrounds like this that have a lot to offer is that you don't need to add much else to the card. For this card, I added a hot foil die cut. I'm using this set on the left from Simon Says Stamp. It is a hot foil plate leaf. It actually creates two. And then there's the coordinating die to cut them out. I fold that with gold foil on white cardstock, cut it out and added it to the center of our background. On top of that, I added our layered thanks die cut. That's a white shadow die cut with a dark teal. That's that pearly paper from one of the paper pads I showed you earlier. And that is for the thanks. I also added a few gold baubles to it and that's it. I feel like that background has so much to offer that you don't need to add much else to the card. And this one I think is my favorite card of the bunch. I really liked this particular background and using it with these magical powders for that resist technique. Look at the different colors that pop up in the background. Just love it. I did not want to cover up much of this, so I just added the sentiment to the center along with three little vellum butterflies. The sentiment is from a Concord and Ninth die set that I've used before in a video. This just a note has turned out to be one of my most used die sets lately. And then we have another with one of my really bold backgrounds. Because the background is so bold, I wanted to go softer with what I added on top. So I used the Simon Says Stamp Olive Leaf Dies, and I cut that from some of the pearly peach colored cardstock. And I put white die cuts behind that for added dimension. I foiled the Thinking of You with gold foil on white cardstock, cut that out and added it on top. And then I added three little miniature white die cut butterflies. This again, I think with the softer color die cuts, it allows that background to shine. And finally, I have a few very simple cards. These are all magical powder cards. You can see this is the one where I use the extra powders to kind of swipe back and forth. These two on the left, I use that flower pattern background stamp and stamped with a soft ink on top of the magic powder background. So you can foil on it, stamp on it, anything you want. This one I like a lot with that soft stamping. I used a Simon Says Stamp 6x8 stamp set for this. I really like the set because of the block style. You can simply add the sentiment right to the center of a card and you're good to go. Great for simple cards like these. 
And the best part about today's video is all of these leftover backgrounds that I have to create more cards. I love a technique that allows me to create fast and bold backgrounds so we can create lots of cards, lots of different style cards. We can die cut from these, we can stamp on them, anything we want. But I'm saving all of these for my next video where I show a fun technique for using your sentiment stamps creatively. All right, if you're interested in all of these products, I have them linked below in my YouTube description. Some of these are from a new Simon Says Stamp release that I think is really worth checking out. It's all linked below. If you want to learn more about other techniques, I have a couple other videos linked here at the end. Thank you so much, as always, for spending this time with me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I'll see you again soon in another video.